Are you ready to go back to school? Okay, jokes aside, unless you're still using Velcro or boa laces, then I imagine you know how to tie your shoes. However, are you doing it properly? There are a surprising amount of options when it comes to properly securing your running shoes, and we're here to try them all. I'm going to be honest with you guys, when I was asked this question, asked to write a script on it, I thought it was a bit of a trick question. However, I've done some research and now realize it is a bit of a minefield. There are so many variations to this simple task that we have been doing all of our lives. So I'm going to be looking at all of the different methods there are and the reasons as to when to use which ones and why you want to use them. I'm quite looking forward to experimenting with this and just changing up something that I've been doing all my life without ever giving any thought to. Before we delve into the detail of how to do up your shoelaces, I quickly want to cover the importance and the reason for doing up your shoes correctly. And the idea being allowing your chosen shoe to be able to deliver its properties that you've chosen it for. So say you've got a really lovely, expensive carbon race shoe, well, you need to do your laces up properly because there's no point if it's going to be moving around on your foot, potentially giving you blisters, or at worst, even losing the energy that you're gaining from that carbon shoe. And then there's nothing worse than doing a muddy cross-country race and losing your shoe halfway through because you've either not done it up properly or your laces have undone. And the other side of things, if you've got a shoe that's done up too tight and your feet start to go numb towards the end of the race. So some attention does need to be paid to the actual tightness of your shoelaces. You've obviously got a choice in the type of shoelaces that you use as well. Elastic laces are great for short distance triathlons, but beyond that, they aren't gonna have the best properties because they're gonna be probably too loose, or if you have them so that they're tight enough, they're losing their elastic property anyway. And then the laces that your shoes come with, aren't always necessarily the best ones. Most laces will have a certain amount of give but enable you to put the tension onto your shoes that you actually require. But you'll find that some shoes just have laces that always undo or maybe they're too short or too long for your needs. So don't be afraid to actually swap out the laces that your shoes came with. Finally, before we move on to the lacing style, we should look at making sure you've got the correct fit of your shoe and the correct tension on your laces. So start off, you can't obviously change a malfitting shoe. So make sure that it's not too tight, it's not too small, ideally roughly a thumb width from the end of your toe to the end of the shoe. And then it comes to the doing it up correctly. So ideally you want to tighten your laces from the bottom first. So make sure at each stage, it feels that it's got the right amount of snugness to hold your foot in place. That's the idea of laces, that it, your foot isn't gonna move inside the shoe, but it's got enough space so that your toes aren't gonna be getting squashed. And as you move up, gradually make sure that each section you're happy with because it's going to be much harder to go back and change the tension. Another tip, when you are doing up your shoes, make sure that you're doing them up whilst you're putting weight down through that foot or you get someone else to do it, especially if it's for a big race or something because sitting down, your foot's going to be in a very different position to when you're actually standing up and putting the weight through it. If you are doing a race, you do your shoes up properly, but then maybe go for a little bit of a warm up because you might find any areas that need tightening or loosening afterwards. And you can just tweak that so that you know you're going to be completely comfortable. Well, I think that's enough talking about the shoe fit and how to lace. It's now time to look at what style of lacing might suit you and your running style. Let's kick things off with a fairly simple yet very effective style of tying your shoelaces. It's known as the looped tie or the runner's lock and it's simply going to be using the final two eyelets of your shoe just to help your foot stay more securely in your shoe and it's great if you want that little bit more sort of security around your instep as well. So you're going to simply with your lace come up through the one from the top and then back down through the final eyelet making sure you leave a loop showing and then with the opposite, you'll do the same on the other side and you'll have your two ends of your laces. And with those, you're gonna simply thread them through those loops you've made. And it will take a little bit of time to tighten this is you've got to tighten the loop itself as well as the lace. You have to do it in increments, but it will just give you that extra security and then you can do your shoes up as normal. And it's great if you're going to be doing any off-road running or anything where your foot might be moving around in your shoe a little bit more. 
the diagonal tie. Now this is thought to actually help the laces follow the natural movement of the foot and it's suited to some shoes more than others. The cloud flow, for example, actually promotes this. It's got a slight change in the fabric in that same diagonal position. So you're going to have one long piece of lace which is going to run the diagonal from the inside of that bottom eyelet all the way through to the top on the other side and with the remaining lace you're then going to simply work your way up going straight across and diagonal up to the next so you've got that one long line and the other lace is doing the rest of the work. Crossover style is perfect for those who might have a high instep or just not want their shoe quite so tight round that mid part of your foot. And it's simply having a crossover before and beyond the mid step. So you can still have that security without that added pressure. So it's quite logical. You just basically do a crossover style until you get to the mid part of the shoe. Then you skip going across. And instead of going across, you just go up to the next eyelet on the same side and then continue with your crossover for the rest of the tying. Skip lacing is very similar to the crossover and the fact that you're going to be leaving a gap of pressure at some point on the shoe, wherever you want it. But it's a little bit more simple in the fact that you don't have to go up an eyelet on the same side. You just simply go across to the next one, skipping it, making sure you skip the same two eyelets on either side. And you can put that at any point in the shoe where you feel it's a little bit too tight, whether that's your instep, whether it's at the bottom of your shoe, if you've got quite wide feet, you can make it very easily adaptable to your foot shape and your foot requirements. The extra eyelet, have you even noticed how many eyelets your shoes have and how many you're using? You might find there's some extra ones at the bottom and the top of your shoe and they might be worth actually using because the ones at the bottom can just give you that bit more security around that wider part of your foot and those extra ones at the top can be really useful if you're someone who maybe finds that your heel moves out of your shoe a little bit or you get some rubbing at the back of the foot. Just putting that extra one will hold your foot more securely. This one is simple, it's as it sounds. The laces are going parallel across your shoes and it's quite a nice, neat and tidy one, but it does serve a purpose as well. It makes it really easy to loosen or tighten the area that you need, especially the top of the shoe. This one is a little more unusual and I'd only recommend it if you're having specific issues that you haven't managed to solve by trying out different shoes. You're basically tying your shoes in sort of twice in two separate bits. So you're going to need to have shorter adapted laces for this, but you're simply going to address the bottom half of your shoe and tie it up like normal, and then maybe leave a gap in the middle if you need to, or just start again and you do the top half of your shoe with another shoelace. So it's kind of like two in one, but you've got that more adaptability to making it specifically in its different tightnesses to the different parts of your foot. It's now time to take a look at how to actually secure our wonderful shoelacing creations. And I must admit, some of these are new to me, so I'm gonna have to work my way through these and hopefully you guys can follow along. First up, nice and easy, we have the traditional bow. And this one doesn't need much of an intro or an explanation. I think it's the bow we've all been taught since childhood, so I'm not gonna dwell on it too long. Start with the first crossover tie and then make a loop with either lace and wrap one around the other and then pull through like so. The double knot. Once you've got your traditional bow at the correct tightness, you can simply make it into a double knot by tying either just the loop pieces or both the loop pieces and their extensions to keep them from moving. Beyond this, there are a few that are new to me, so let's take a look. We've got the Ian knot. Now, it looks so simple. I will admit though that I have practiced this a few times off camera. In fact, I think I'm better just to demo it in a slow-mo than I am to even explain this one. And we've also got Ian's secure knot. A little more time required for this one, but once you've locked in your laces, they won't be moving. Well, let's break it down and take a look. Yeah. 
and then the surgeon's knot. This is basically a couple of extra loop arounds before you pull the loops tight. I think we need to look closely at this one too. Hands up, I don't even know who Ian is, but that was quite fun learning those different tying techniques. And hopefully you guys managed to keep up with me on that one. I have actually only scratched the surface when it comes to lacing techniques, but I think that is plenty for today. And I imagine there's gonna be something that will work for you, your foot type and your running requirements. So go away and experiment with them. But before we finish, just want to talk about any excess laces. If you've got a little bit left over, you might want to just tie another knot, which will help secure your shoes, but also stop there being too much flapping around or simply tuck in any ends under your shoelaces and you'll find some shoes even have a tab that's left for holding it. And finally, I'm curious, how do you tie yours? If you've got a, a specific technique we've not covered or if you're gonna change yours to one of these that we've covered today, do let me know in the comments section below. And if you appreciate the effort I've gone to today in discovering all of these different techniques, please do give this video a like. You can follow us on our social media and you can also subscribe to us on YouTube.